You know Hollywood? Yeah. Hollywood is packed full of rumors, speculation, and just plain old lies. For example, take the famous rumor that came from a source in Universal from 2010 that Jaws was being remade in 3D as a comedy. And 11 years later, well, it ain't here, is it? When it comes to cinema, it can be hard to measure whether or not a filmmaker or actor is serious about their intentions, especially when they start pitching oddball ideas that seem too far-fetched to be reality. However, cinema has a grand history of being deceptive, and just when you think a film is utter nonsense, that's the moment when it can surprise you by being clever, intelligent, or more insane than you ever thought possible. These are 10, but only a few examples in recent years where films have captivated an audience by being deceptive, where the audience have thought that the makers may have just been joking around, but in fact, were being completely serious. I am Marcus Bronzy, this is What Culture, and here are 10 movies that people initially thought were a joke. You're a joke, man. Go off TikTok. Number 10, Punch Drunk Love. Adam Sandler is probably best known for his roles in comedy and his silly voices. However, in 1998's The Wedding Singer, he proved that he was capable of a more serious set of roles, and his appearance in 2002's Punch Drunk Love only cemented that fact. Acclaimed director Paul Thomas Anderson, the genius behind Boogie Nights and psychological epic Magnolia, decided to take a chance on Sandler in a very serious role that of Barry Egan, a man who falls in love with his sister's English co-worker whilst being extorted by a phone sex line run by a crooked mattress salesman. Punch Drunk Love is a subversive film that leans on the wacky side of its comedic set pieces, but the film hides a serious emotional and heartfelt message underneath everything else. By having Adam Sandler as one of the lead roles, it helped to revitalize his career. People expected a disappointing wacky comedy from him, but they were given a serious emotional story that left a lasting impact. Number 9. Joker Todd Phillips is a filmmaker who is best known for comedy movies, most notably The Hangover and its two sequels. Each of those movies raked in millions at the box office. As a result, Phillips was chosen by Warner Brothers to write, produce and direct a film about DC's most chaotically violent villain, The Joker. That doesn't make sense, does it? And that's what everyone thought at first. People were very unsure about a Joker film being made by Phillips, and the fact that Joaquin Phoenix was confirmed to play the iconic character didn't help with public opinion either. It just didn't look good on paper. However, when it was finally released, Joker was in safe hands with Phillips and Phoenix because it made literally billions at the box office, won a bunch of awards, and most importantly, it was an awesome film. As a result, Phoenix is now an in-demand actor once again, and Phillips is setting up to do the same thing with a Hulk Hogan biopic for his next venture. Number 8. Sausage Party Taking its cues from films such as Fritz the Cat and South Park, Bigger, Longer and Uncut, Sausage Party is an animated comedy film with masses of adult humour thrown in for good measure. It's safe to say that nobody expected this film to be good. People were expecting a shallow premise and just a bit of fun. But once it was released, it turned out that Sausage Party was way more intelligent than people initially gave it credit for. Behind the comedy lies a film full of clever satirical humour. Number 7. The Human Centipede 2009's The Human Centipede is one of those films that actually started off as a joke that Tom Six decided to turn into a sick work of art. A film about a scientist, based on the once infamous war criminal Joseph Mengele, who kidnapped three people and stitches them together so that they crudely become connected by one digestive tract. After the first entry was released, the movie was considered a meme because people, including myself, just couldn't believe that something like this existed. South Park and The Simpsons got wind of this and even decided to make their own references, which is pretty proof that it had definitely had impact. Six capitalized on this by making two sequels, but by 2015 it seemed that Six's joke had run out of steam. The Human Centipede 3, the final sequence, was released that year and it would end up being the last of the series. Number 6. Sharknado Sharknado is a film with a concept so laughably silly that it became a meme way before it was released. The concept of a shark tornado tapped into something exciting with fans of bad horror movies. It had everybody laughing at the film, expecting it to be absolutely dreadful yet wildly entertaining. In the end, the movie itself didn't actually disappoint. It was as bad as people imagined it to be. However, Sharknado was such a famous joke that even critics started giving it positive reviews, and despite its poor quality, it currently sits at 78% on Rotten Tomatoes, with critics saying things such as, Sharknado redefined so bad it's good for a new generation. 
Nobody, not even the makers expected Sharknado to become as popular as it ended up being. As a result, Sharknado did wonders for low-budget shark movies, leading to the resurgence of the genre in the 2010s with films such as Ghost Shark, Sharktopus, and my favourite, Mega Shark vs Mecha Shark. Asylum actually decided to turn it into a franchise. To date, there have been six glorious entries into the Sharknado franchise. The final entry seems to have put the last nail in the coffin for this long-running joke. It was released in 2018 and was titled The Last Sharknado. It's about time. Number 5. The Room the Room is an infamously bad movie made in 2003 by filmmaker Tommy Wiseau. Everything about The Room is terrible. The writing is awful, the acting's horrific, even the camera quality is hard to watch because Wiseau used two different types. However, The Room seems to hit the perfect amount of awkwardly terrible, spins right back around and becomes absolutely hilarious. It may have been originally imagined as a no-budget drama movie, but thanks to the film's horrifically poor quality, it is now heavily regarded as a zany comedy movie. People who watched the movie in the cinemas found it funny in a compellingly strange way which initially confused Wiseau, but it wasn't long before he started labelling his serious drama as black comedy and began to fully embrace the fan culture that surrounded his film. Wiseau has admitted he legitimately had no idea what he was doing with the film, despite being the man in charge, resulting in a masterpiece. Number 4. Fateful Findings Like Tommy Wiseau, Neil Breen is another amateur filmmaker whose art is so bad that people believed it was all a joke. Breen is incredibly serious about his movies. His stardom started with his second movie, 2009's I Am Here, now, where Breen started to grow an audience in the underground circuits. 2012's Fateful Findings ensured that Breen would be loved by film fans around the globe. After its release, some of the clips of Fateful Findings ended up on YouTube labelled as the worst movie ever made. But everybody thought it was a joke, and that propelled it. One scene in particular is the one where character Jim is shot and killed. It ended up on a fair amount of try not to laugh challenges all over YouTube. This helped Breen's popularity as people started looking for the clip's original source. It wasn't long before the movie was tracked down and pushed into the public eye because of how strange, bizarre and uncomfortably funny it is. The thing that made it much better was the fact that Breen, like Wiseau, has no self-awareness. He believes that his sci-fi dramas are legitimate, mainstream, full-length feature films and not midnight movies movies, despite them being enjoyed as the latter. Number 3. Birdemic Shock and Terror 2010's Birdemic is up there with the most notorious. Directed by James Wynn, an independent filmmaker from Vietnam, Birdemic is a film that embodies shock, horror and incompetent filmmaking. A much like Fateful Findings was discovered through online clips. The most popular clip from Birdemic that shocked the internet is a scene where a group of people get attacked by killer birds and fend them off with coat hangers. The reason why it became so popular is because the birds on screen are actually just gifs that have been superimposed over the footage via cheap editing software. The awkward hilarity made people curious so they decided to track down the source hoping that it wasn't just a silly joke. When it was discovered to be real, the film started to develop a dedicated fan following. Number 2. Werner Herzog Eats His Shoe Errol Morris is one of the greatest names when it comes to documentary filmmaking. He is best known for the critically acclaimed 1988 documentary The Thin Blue Line where he helped to set free an innocent man from prison. However, Morris wouldn't have had such a career if it had not been for Werner Herzog. One of Morris's first ever documentaries was Gates of Heaven, which was about a pet cemetery business and Herzog had no faith in the film whatsoever. Famously, Herzog made a bet with Morris, if you finish this film and show it in cinemas, I'll eat my shoe. The problem was that Morris finished the film, showed it in cinemas and it ended up becoming critically acclaimed. Herzog, being a man of honour, had to keep up his end of the bargain as well. Thus, what started off as a joke between filmmakers ended up as a documentary directed by Les Blanks called Werner Herzog Eats His Shoe. Be careful what you say, it can come back and bite you in the ass. Number 1. The Lego Movie Nobody expected the Lego movie to work. Not only was it a licensed film, but it was a blatant feature-length advertisement for toys, a fact which caused a lot of doubt about its quality. When people saw that Chris Pratt and Will Ferrell were attached to the project and started hearing the Everything is Awesome song, 
doubt began to set in even harder. However, when people actually went to see the film, they discovered that there was much more on offer than once thought. It turned out that the Lego movie was actually a heartfelt family comedy that touched onto some very deep issues such as valuing oneself, valuing childhood, and being able to express one's creativity whilst others frown upon it. It feels like a movie made by children for children, capturing the pure essence of childhood wonder that's swiftly forgotten in a businessy world. The Lego movie was determined to be a film much greater than the sum of its parts. Critics enjoyed it, audiences loved it and it became a surprise hit of 2014 with spin-offs and sequels still being made to this day. Well, there you have it. I've been Marcus Bronzy and that was 10 movies people initially thought were a joke. What else did we miss? Let us know in the comments below. Also, drop us a like and a subscribe. We're on Instagram and Twitter at What's Culture. You can also find me on Insta and TikTok at Marcus Bronzy, M-A-R-C-U-S-B-R-O-N-Z-Y. I've also got a podcast called How to Kill an Hour. You can find that wherever you listen to yours. Until next time.